So now that you've seen a few episodes of Chip, Chip Wars, Wars, you might be wondering, What's up with all these power VR chips he keeps talking about? Background. First, let's go over two things. Scalar computing versus parallel computing. Scalar processing is simple in that it's designed to handle one thing at a time. CPU core architectures are usually scalar. The problem is that every bump up in frequency, Wait, you mean more megahertz, right? Exactly. Increases power requirements, creating more heat. And for mobile devices with small batteries, this problem is big. Scalar computing ruled the 20th century when most people work on desktops that were always plugged in. But today, the star of chip innovation is parallel processing, where many calculations can be done at the same time or in parallel. It's at the heart of the multi-core explosion since 2004 in PCs, and it's fueling the growth in smartphones and tablets today. Devices can get a lot more done with parallel operations even though the chips are really running lower frequencies. This, along with pipelines and instruction sets, debunks the megahertz myth. The misconception that clock rate alone determines computing performance. Since the beginning, GPUs have always run at lower clock speeds relative to the CPU, but their advantage is the parallel operation architecture running on multiple cores. Traditionally, GPUs lighten the load of the CPU by handling all graphics processing, because these jobs use the same calculations on large sets of data. Since the GPU can get a lot of work done at lower clock speeds, it's actually more power efficient and runs at cooler temperatures. Lately, chip companies have been promoting programming platforms that make it easier for traditional scalar software developers to use the GPU to get more stuff done through efficient parallel operations. So then what's Power VR? This episode is about imagination technology. A British company that has always been involved in parallel processing. Founded in 1985 as Video Logic, it focused on things like graphics, home audio, and video conferencing. In 1995, Video Logic partnered with NEC to release its custom GPU, Power, Power VR, VR, in video game consoles, arcades, TVs, and computers. The most famous release was in the Dreamcast, the finale for Sega. What helped it succeed was a well-supported platform for game developers that allowed them to create PC-like games for the last Sega console. But unfortunately, this wasn't good enough to beat back the onslaught from Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft's first console. In 1999, Video Logic became Imagination Technology. And like Arm Holdings, it began to focus on intellectual property licensing, selling semiconductor designs to other companies that produce system-on-chips. It also acquired companies to help grow its architectural design business. Then, in late 2006, Intel noticed its potential and acquired almost 3% of the company. In 2008, it made it into the big leagues. It signed a huge secret license agreement for its new high-performance Power VR SGX. In return, this secretive tech company got a 3.6% stake in imagination. Any guesses? If you guessed this company, Thumbs up. The Power VR SGX 535 came out in the iPhone 3GS eight months later. Watch a five-year iPhone history here. In 2009, the financial crisis hit. Nobody really knew if the world economy was headed into another Great Depression. A huge owner of imagination needed some quick cash. Saad Group started looking for buyers, and it didn't take long before Intel and Apple stepped up to the plate. When all the dust settled, together they ended up owning about 25% of the firm. While imagination seems like a money printing machine for now, it does have some issues. If Apple accounts for about 50% of royalty revenue, while Samsung kicks in another 20%, imagination could end up like Portal Player. Watch Chip Wars 6 unless it diversifies and finds other customers. So in 2009, the Power VR started showing up in Drawing. devices everywhere through Texas Instruments OMAP 3. Watch Chip Wars 4. This gave the company access to a majority of the smartphone graphics market. In 2011, Imagination signed a licensing agreement with one of its biggest competitors, maker of the Adreno GPU. Wait, 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 let me guess which company. Hmm, can you give me a hint? It's in the BlackBerry Bold, the Nokia Lumia, and the HTC Evo 3D. Qualcomm? You are right. Watch Chip Wars 3. Qualcomm has a license for PowerVR GPUs which might show up in upcoming Windows 8 devices. And in April 2012, it also bought licenses for the Insigma chip architecture for TV devices. Why would Qualcomm do this when it has its own GPU? Well, it seems that the Adreno might not be ready for Windows RT in the fall of 2012. See the Microsoft Surface Keynote here. And Qualcomm might be hedging itself for future demand by using the PowerVR GPU as a backup. So really, Imagination Technology is poised to become the go-to mobile graphics design company for almost all ARM-based smartphones and tablets. So what's in the future of mobile graphics? Looking ahead, Imagination acquired Caustic Graphics, a company founded by a group of former Apple engineers doing some really cool stuff with ray tracing effects. And recently, Imagination joined forces with AMD, ARM, MediaTek, and Texas Instruments to standardize two things, a single accelerated processing architecture for low-power computing, and a parallel programming platform to go with it to help software developers 
take advantage of these upcoming chips that could handle tasks quicker and more efficiently than the CPU. What's all that mean? Well, thumbs up if you'd like to see a tablet or smartphone powerful enough to rival a seven-year-old video game console. Imagine carrying a future video game library in your pocket. You could beam the games to compatible TVs everywhere and start playing with your Bluetooth controller. But imagination isn't alone in this chip, chip war. Chip. ARM has been trying to license its own Molly graphics platform to partners. But so far, really just Samsung has signed up. Watch Chip Wars 5. Also, NVIDIA and Qualcomm are trying to build their own platforms. But imagination technology, with Intel and Apple support, seems to have the upper hand in the mobile graphics game so far. Stay tuned for the last episode of Chip Wars as we go over all the flagship mobile chipsets for 2012. And stay subscribed as we look at these processors and upcoming devices and appliances like the new iPhone LTE, the iPad mini, the Kindle Fire 2, and new Samsung and Asus devices. I just want to say thanks to everyone out there for supporting the channel. I really do read your comments. Keep them coming. They keep me motivated as I work hard to make more content. Sorry if I don't respond to all of you right away, but really, thanks for watching, liking, and subscribing to these episodes of Chip Wars. And follow me on Twitter, where I post good deals that I find once in a while in the tech world. Thanks again. Thank <laughs> you.